Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Hello. It's a great pleasure to introduce Sergei Artemov, a distinguished professor at the City University of New York, created an influential logic group in Moscow, you know, recreates one in New York. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for introduction. And thanks Microsoft for inviting me to give this talk and for the support of fundamental research in general. This is a this is a relatively or let's say rather new new stuff actually published in technical series of technical reports and the master paper is still underway. Um, generally speaking, it's it says about rational it concerns rational decisions uh, uh, in non-probabilistic setting. Traditional game theory assumes enough knowledge uh, to. Uh, to fight the uncertainty which may appear in the games and when decision making. Uh, and uh, there are two main avenues of uh, avoiding or fighting uncertainty or dealing with uncertainty. Uh, historically, the second one is, uh, is the first, but I'll start with this one. If, to avoid uncertainty completely, uh, this is mm, typical representative of this approach is Oman's theorem on rationality. Uh, to assume enough knowledge. Or the second approach, which is historically the first, of course, or, well, it's, it's a different subject, history of the matter. But the second approach is to deal with uncertainty probabilistically, uh, namely, to assume that the player or the decision-making agent knows probability distribution of all consequences of his actions and is willing to take chances. It's usually associated with the names of von Neumann and Morgenstern. And uh, I'll show you an example of how the whole thing works. So this, this, this is a very simple game tree. There are two players, A and B, and A makes, certain, A makes decision to, uh, to play down with the payoffs one for himself and two for B, or to pass to play across, after which B makes the decision. Again, to play down with the payoff zero and zero, uh, or to play across with the payoffs two for A and one for B. And uh, what would be the, uh, the rational behavior, what was the rational decision uh, for A. For B, it's rather clear because if, if it gets to the point where B makes a decision, then B, as a rational player, should play across and gets whatever uh, uh, his payoff one, which is greater than zero. Uh, what about A? And let's assume that A knows that B is, for example, twice as likely to play across than to play down. And then A can calculate the uh, average payoff on the base of this uh, probability distribution, average payoff uh, uh, when A plays across is then uh, uh, two thirds times two, which is four thirds, uh, which is greater than the payoff one when playing down. So the average payoff for A playing across is greater than its uh, A's payoff for playing down, and hence the best choice for A is across. This this is a probabilistic. Uh, it's a baby example of the probabilistic decision making. The same game, the same game tree, but the epistemic conditions are a little bit different. Suppose that A knows that B is rational. It's a purely epistemic condition, so the same players on the same game tree, but and B is rational. And in this situation, A knows that B is rational. So B is not an environment. It's not a coin tossing uh, device and it's a rational, uh, B is rational and hence B maximizes his own payoffs. So if A knows that B is going to maximize his own payoff, then A can predict 
exp exactly what, what B is going to do, namely that B plays a cross. In this situation, A can sure can bet for playing uh, on, on can just decide to play a cross and uh, what, n by knowing that B is going to play a cross, and then they end up with payoffs two for A and one for B. And this is a typical uh, um, again baby example when the decision decisions are based on the basis of knowledge of, in this in this case the knowledge of rationality, the epistemic condition. Uh, what if the signing probabilities are not natural or not uh, uh, cannot be done cannot be made, made responsibly and uh, uh, the the fact that B is rational is also uh, uh, rather unclear and here's the the the, the the example which I call the Apollo 13 example. Suppose A is a mission control making decision and has an option of sending into space a specially trained astronaut B, who unfortunately has been exposed to German missiles, or a reserve astronaut, uh, and the reserve astronaut is, uh, is symbolized by the arrow going down with the payoff one. So A, of course, uh, would love to, to send a specially trained astronaut and to get the payoff too, but this, uh, then there's an environment which makes decision at this node and uh, uh, which adds the uncertainty to the picture. So if B doesn't get sick, then his mission will be uh, a success. So that's payoff two, and uh, otherwise it will be boarded with failure, payoff zero. And uh, this is the situation where assigning probabilities is not uh, cannot be made responsibly by several reasons. First of all, the payoffs are ordinal payoffs, 0, 1, and 2. They're not real cardinal payoffs. They're not money. They're not uh, uh, specific uh, amount of resources. They're just preferences of 0, 1, 2. And the difference between 0 and 1 may be uh, just quite different from the difference between 1 and 2 in this respect. So, and uh, it's very difficult to assign the cardinals or real, real payoffs to the whole thing. Uh, again, ordinal payoffs, ordinal payoffs are not good for uh, evaluating probabilities. And the second thing is, of course, that assigning probabilities, it's the same picture. Assigning probabilities, uh, um, probabilities is also not, it cannot be done responsibly because uh, at least we suppose that at the decision making moment there is no reliable statistics of how many people who were exposed by, to John missiles in the family they really get sick and the whole thing. So the, the, applying the normal, you know, for Neumann Morgenstein uh, um, decision making, the probabilistic decision making here uh, is not going to work by several reasons. It's not. So, but with enough goodwill we can apply the Harsanyi's maximum principle and Harsanyi is one of the uh, one of the Nobel laureates in, in, in game theory, in economics, may to be to be exact, which says that if you cannot rationally expect more than your maximum payoff, always use a maximum strategy. And according to our scenario, A can hope, but cannot know for sure that B doesn't get sick and uh, delivers payoff too. Therefore. A has no reason to rationally expect more than maximum value one, which is one in this case. And then uh, when moving across, so the rational choice for a, for A is the maximum solution down. And that's exactly what happened in the real uh, Apollo 13 story. They, play, uh, they send the, replace, the replacement uh, astronauts and we uh, all know the rest. Uh, it was a successful failure. They call it, it's Apollo 13, which, uh, which you know, that's Houston, we have a problem. That's the story. And I, I took it from a real story, and, and then, of course, it appeared in the famous movie with Tom Hanks playing the Lowell, the, the captain, and that's the whole story in there. So here you see that the decision is made, and the, the, the mission control A doesn't have any hesitations. They knew, they knew exactly that there is a, if there is a reasonable, ch a slightest chance for B to get sick, they, of course, replace, replace him with a, replacement uh, astronaut, though they would ra otherwise prefer to send the, the specially trained person to space of them. 
so. Now, uh, uh, what we try to do can be uh, placed within the boundaries of so-called epistemic game theory. And uh, uh, within this area, the, it was first admitted that epistemic states of players matter and the, the, the epistemic conditions were studied under which the standard game theoretical solutions hold, like backward induction, Nash equilibrium, and something. So the people, the game theorists, were first, of course, to realize that there are some rather strong default assumptions for these solutions to hold and to play. And uh, if these assumptions are not uh, made, then these methods do not really work. And this area is still on the way towards developing a coherent theory of games in which epistemic states of players are a legitimate part of the game specifications. So what we try to do, and within the epistemic game theory, the modern approach is to, to deliver, to describe the game, for example, given the game tree with payoffs, but also to specify epistemic states of players exactly. What uh, do players, uh, what players know at each node? One decision making because uh, if the verbal formulation of rational decisions always refers to what uh, modulo to refers to the state epistemic state of player or the state of player's knowledge or belief, if you wish. So uh, uh, we, we, we back to our original small game with A and B, and what if rational players are not aware of other rationality, and we saw the example, for example, B's environment, or B is rational, but A doesn't know whether B is rational or not, and uh, cannot, the, the probability distribution is also unknown. Or uh, we may say that we are just please assign subjective probabilities, but there are several severe uh, um, objections about subjective probabilities. First of all, there they're really ad hoc, and uh, uh, it reminds me of some, some famous joke uh, when this, the, the one person asks the other, uh, what's the probability that if you go the next, uh, the, the, tomorrow to the White House for the excursion, you meet a live dinosaur there? And uh, the answer is one half. How come? Well, either you meet him or you don't. So uh, subjective probabilities are funny. So, and uh, there are a lot of experiments which really show that they do not behave according to the rules of real probabilities. There, there are no additivity and, and, other, and other things. Anyhow, uh, uh, if, you want the subject, if you want probabilities to appear in the picture, they'd better to be part of the specification of the game. We have to say what A really knows about B whether it's probability, uh, if it's probability based, then we assume that be the, what's the, 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 the probability distribution or rationality, but since they are not part of the description of the game right now, that we have no reason to assume them a priori. And uh, so we consider a special case, which uh, I hope we argued uh, convincingly uh, have, have right to exist as a, a, a games, as a, as a game theoretical question, uh, what rational players should do if they're not, they don't have enough information to guess other, to figure other players' moves. On the other, on the one hand, on the other hand, then the probability distributions are not assumed to be known. And uh, there was no canonical answer to this question. Surprisingly, and uh, there are some special cases, probably rather important special cases, but not really, uh, not really canonical answer uh, of, of, any, uh, of any type of generality. You can apply this Harsanyi principle here. That's, that's what we're going to do. And uh, in this respect, it was, uh, for me as an outsider of the field, it was interesting to watch that if you take the, uh, the, the game theoretical postulates seriously and apply them, you really see the solution. But surprisingly, the, the game theorists, they, they just walk, they passed through. They, it, it was not, it has, it has never been done, actually. And uh, now when it's done, and uh, the, the first reaction on publications and technical reports are pretty positive, so maybe, I hope this, this, will, be, this will become a legitimate part of what game theory 
uh, does in this particular corner of their own universe. Uh, for example, the, such classical, uh, the classical approach is Nash equilibria. So equilibrium, so we'll see what kind of Nash equilibrium. Um, the verbal definition of Nash equilibrium is that this, this is a pair of strategies. So the basically, in this case, the choices of A and B combined such that uh, no player is, uh, can, Im can Im improve his own performance unilaterally. But when the other strategies, are f the other choice of the other strategies are fixed, then uh, he or she uh, could do better by changing his own strategy accordingly. And uh, it's a well-known thing that in this particular game, there are two Nash equilibria, basically down, down for the solution and the cross, across. And uh, we, we can easily verify that, in, 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 that each of them is Nash equilibrium. For example, if down, down is uh, the choice, the strategy profile, then if A unilaterally changes his down to a cross, then he loses rather than gains. And if B changes his choice from down to a cross, it doesn't change anything. So it's, there's no improvement. Uh, so on. And it's easy to check that the other two choices, there are four strategy profiles possible. There are not Nash equilibria. So, but there are two Nash equilibria in this game. And uh, so even this you know, classical approach to things doesn't give a definitive answer here. But um, well, people have to make decisions. And according to the meta rules of the game, that's the, you, each, each player has to make a decision. And there should be some rational way of doing this, at least the best known way, the best way of doing this. And uh, uh, so let's revise again or recap the rationality postulates, which are basically due to Harsanyi, but they, they just I like, borrowed them. We borrowed them from Harsanyi where they were formulated. But of course, uh, it's a widely accepted set of postulates. And of course, this is an extraction of the postulates that are much longer. The list is much longer, but they concern the probabilities and we try to do in a non-probabilistic setting. So this is a non-probabilistic projection of what uh, uh, the usual um, rationality principles say. So the first, a rational player in uh, perfect information games uh, chooses a maximum solution among all the strategies the player deems possible. And the postulate one is commonly known and accepted by rational players. Uh, for example, if, if A knows that B is rational, that A knows that B behaves according to principle number one, one making his own choices. The postulate one is an explicit, epistemically explicit form of Harsanyi's maximum principle. And likewise, two is nothing by Harsanyi's mutually expected rationality principle and uh, um, expressed in, ep in epistemic language. So the small, uh, the small addition to this, it's an explicit form. We just made the, uh, the addition that's saying among all strategies which player deems possible, that's, uh, uh, so it's not a, not a pure maximin, which is well studied and has well-known deficiencies. It's like, uh, you know, pure maximin, it's like the worst case in the complexity theory. Of course, and we know that it's a nice theoretical device, but in practical considerations, if you can avoid, uh, if you can avoid the worst case scenario, uh, estimates, you have some responsible way of assigning probabilities, then you use average case, or there are many other uh, things which usually perform much, much better. And in, the, in, the, in, in certain case, in certain sense that what we're doing here is we we also deviate from maximum solution, but we, our device is epistemic. We say that we use, we improve maximum strategy by using all the knowledge we have about the game. So we rule out certain, certain strategies as impossible, and only after that we, we try to apply the maximum solution. After we exhausted all, possible, all possibilities to exclude certain strategies, it means with, uh, that we reach the limit of our knowledge so any further improvement is beyond our knowledge. This, this would be already made based on hope or some, you know, this hope of divine intervention or something, which is not quite rational itself. And that's what this principle actually says. But again, th this, this is an expli epistemically explicit form of Harsanyi's maximum postulate, actually. Uh, 
another form, in, another characteristics of this approach is uh, uh, the rational player, which operates in non-probabilistic setting and bases his decision on knowledge rather than luck, guesswork, uh, or sudden opponent cooperation error, or something like this. And uh, it turns out that these this classical postulates of rational behavior actually lead to uh, a very specific and uh, uh, well-behaved mathematical model of decision-making, which we call here the, the, the knowledge-based rational decision model, a KBR model, for the lack of better uh, name. And, uh, another comparison, even before we just go more explicitly in how, what, how the universe of decision-making looks like uh, with these assumptions, is knowledge versus beliefs. The game theory often, um, or normally, usually considers decision, uh, decisions based on beliefs rather than knowledge, as I mentioned, but and the beliefs are represented by probability distributions. And we do, we're, we're filling the void which is left, so what if we try to make our decision on base of knowledge only? And, uh, uh, and, and, that's, the ba and, uh, and that's the basic difference, and uh, uh, we claim that in certain situations players seem to incline to make decisions on the base of their knowledge rather than guess, beliefs, and things like this. And uh, I, we gave this, this uh, Apollo 13 example that also we can come with military uh, examples, high stake commercial examples, juridical decisions, and others. We play according to our knowledge rather than our hopes and uh, probability is, uh, the um, assigning probability is not part of the picture. So of course, in this respect, the KBR theory is not universal, but seems to do the job in non-probabilistic setting. Again, uh, it will be our last slide, we'll compare this, this approach to more traditional probabilistic approach. Uh, well, later on, let's try to explain how the games look, how, how the universe of games looks like, at least perfect formation games looks like uh, under this KBR theory. So the, the key observation here is that there is the highest known payoff. It means that at every moment, uh, at every moment, uh, the player who makes decision, he knows about certain payoffs that are attainable. He has a strategy of attaining them, how to get this, this uh, the certain payoffs, but uh, for certain payoffs, A knows that he doesn't know how to get there. And this th this is a basic observation. It's a basic observation. I'll probably give a picture there, uh, which uh, it's a simple but fundamental fact, which is based on the elementary properties of knowledge. For example, so this this is a uh, the, the vertical x. We, we put there uh, all possible payoffs, or possible according to the game tree or something. And uh, first, the certain amount of smaller payoffs are the ones which are known to, the, to, to player I as secured by a certain strategy. He knows to guide them. And then, so for certain payoffs, I knows that uh, they're not secured, so he cannot uh, get them by, secure them by any specific strategy. And there is always the highest known payoff, the one which, the highest one which he knows that he can get there. And it's, um, it's clearly closed down, so if uh, I knows that certain payoff is attainable, then all lower payoffs are also attainable in this respect. And uh, uh, so there is always this, this key point, the highest known payoff. At, in every game, in every uh, decision making with the stand, within the standard understand, understanding of knowledge. It seems to this highest known payoff shouldn't you quantify sigma away? Uh, this, we, we'll do it in the, in the next slide, yes. So this, this one is the highest known payoff. Uh, yep, let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it in this. Yeah. The basic definition has the sigma explicitly in. We quantify it away next time, uh, in the next step. And the problem is that if, if I choose a strategy, then it's still uncertainty in the game, because he doesn't know other people's strategy. And he knows that he plays the strategy, and there are all, there, there's always best case and worst case. And uh, uh, 
depending on how other people play, there's still there's still always the highest one which you can get, which is secure get in this one. And the roles exist and is and unique and known to the corresponding player in each node of the game. Let's indeed quantify this away next time. The best known strategy and the best known move. There may be many strategies corresponding to the highest known payoff and the The best known strategy is the one which corresponds to the highest known, uh, which, which gives the highest, uh, highest, known, uh, highest known payoff for the given player and then uh, in a given node. There may be many best strategies because, because of uh, just all the certainty of the game, easy to come with the example. However, for generic games, is the usual object in game theory, where all terminal payoffs corresponding to any player are different, so there is no uh, equally good moves uh, paths in the tree for the same, for the same player. Uh, all st strategies start with the same move. So uh, with all this hand-waving, which can be made explicit, there is always a unique best-known move for each player. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. In order to, uh, we assume for the for the sake of the, the, we consider fine, we consider finite games. That that's correct. That's correct. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can describe exactly the conditions under which this consideration uh, really just which stands. But we'll to make things simple, we'll consider finite games. There, absolutely correct observation. Yes, thank you. So there is always a unique best known move for a rational player. It means that he knows that if he moves this way, he gets something, and this is the highest known payoff. And any other move, with any other move, he will get, in generic game, he, he, he will get less. As he, he, the secured payoff is less than the one which is this move. And basically, uh, in, uh, mm, that's the key observation. So rational players play the best known move. If they really base their solution, their, their decisions on knowledge rather than on hope and guesswork. So the KBR decision me method: rational players always choose the move which yields the highest known payoff, uh, and, and namely <coughs> the best known move. For example, here in generic perfect information games, each player has the only has only one. One and only one KBR strategy. So there is always a solution. The solution is always unique, uh, pr provided games is, is uh, generic or near generic. There are some different definitions, which rule out uh, uncertainty caused by indistinguishable moves. For example, in the same game which we played already several times, more exactly in the same game tree, uh, we consider two games on the same game tree. For first, A knows that B is rational. That's the one we already considered. If, well, both players A and B is rational, and A knows that B is rational. So B plays a cross as a rational player. He chooses a cross rather than down. And A, since A knows that B is rational, guesses, just knows exactly that B is going to play a cross. And so A, a plays a cross, B is rational, he chooses. So they end up with playing two and one. And the second game with the same game tree, epistemically different condition. A doesn't know that B is rational. By some reason, so A considers any move by B possible, down on it. And so the best known move, the, 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 the highest payoff for A, the highest known payoff for A playing across is still zero because he cannot know that one is just two is attainable. He just doesn't know according to the game, and hence A plays down. B plays across, but A doesn't know this and plays down because he cannot know. And that's the, that's the answer, KBR answer, for this particular game. So the general KBR view of the game, we can see that the game, so extensive form games, or perfect information games in extensive form. Uh, so A is a rational player, and uh, then at each A node where A makes the move, oops, uh, a has a unique epistemically possible move, 
because this is a KBR solution. A knows that there's, there's, that's the best move for a coordinate uh, based on A's knowledge in the game. But A does not necessarily know which move uh, uh, his opponents are making in other nodes. And, and from the A's point of view, for the B node, which is B is any other player, there is a certain, uh, uh, certain range of possible moves. So A knows exactly his own moves. He doesn't know the other, other guy's moves. And uh, uh, conversely, B knows his own moves. Uh, but B has only certain guesses about uh, certain possibility for A moves. And if the, uh, we, the, the game is based on knowledge, then the, all, the, the range of possible moves for B con contains the real move by B. And this, it follows from the usual assumption of activity of knowledge. So if A considers these things possible for B, then the real move which B is making is within this range, too. Can we go to the previous? Yes. So suppose when A goes down, yes. the payoff is epsilon, epsilon. Yep. And when B goes across, the payoff is 1 over epsilon, 1 over epsilon. Uh -huh. And now epsilon gets smaller and smaller. Yes. And the, current, the guaranteed part goes down to 0. Yep. And so if consider epsilon very small, mm -hmm. then the guaranteed thing is very little. Yes. And taking chances buys you a lot. Yes, so yes. Sir. So in the real world, probably the Russian, very rational people probably choose to go across. Absolutely, yes. And this will, uh, we'll discuss this in the very last slide when we compare uh, this KBR solution to the, to the other solutions. Yes, but uh, also I, mm, uh, I want to point out that your example is based on cardinal payoffs. One. Whereas cardinal payoffs, right. you really, but here 0, 1, and 2 is all, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, uh, ordinal preferences, yes. And of course, we're talking about mathematical, mathematical model. In, uh, as we all know, mathematical models have only a certain, certain range of uh, reasonable applications, and if you push the push it too far, it just breaks down as every as everything else. And this is one of the ways when you push it push it too far, indeed. Uh, yes. So why KBR is so special for perfect information games? And perfect information games, KBR is the only decision method which is definitive and rational based on knowledge. We can really just list the conditions and formalize them in a, in, a, in a rather plausible way and prove a formal theorem not too hard there. And uh, uh, we'll skip proving the theorem, of course, but we'll just play with, consider examples. So we compare this KBR uh, with other uh, classical methods of decision making in game theory, and particularly in perfect information games. So if we saw the, the, the calculating Nash equilibrium in games is uh, not definitive because we can come with a different Nash equilibria. We don't know which one to. There's no d definitive uh, um, resolution which one to make. The also, the iterated on dominance. So this, we, 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 drop, we drop strategies in, uh, from the picture, strategy profiles or strategies which are dominated, strategies which are do strictly dominated by some other strategies. And this is a very powerful method, but first, it, first of all, it requires the common knowledge of rationality. And uh, uh, in perfect information games, there are much, well, a different definitive recommendations under this assumption. So it's a rather strong assumption. First and second, Nash equilibrium uh, is actually a special case of iterate and dominance, uh, at least in terms of, uh, well, we'll see the picture. So this method, Nash equilibrium is better than the iterated determinants, but uh, both are not definitive in this case. The backward induction, uh, which um, it's a special case of uh, KBR solution, uh, which works under the assumption of common knowledge of rationality, which is a very strong assumption. And uh, there is a classical Omens theorem on rationality, which says that backward induction solution is the solution of the game, given common knowledge of rationality, and uh, mm, which, is a, which is, again, a special case of KBR, 
but in general, KBR solution does not assume any knowledge of rationality. So it works, KBR works uh, for any epistemic conditions. In, in a very special case, when uh, the game is oversaturated with knowledge, uh, the common knowledge of rationality allows players to figure every move of any other player in the game, so they have just one only choice. And remember the picture of the game, A would know not only his own moves, but all his opponent's moves, so there's no uncertainty at all whatsoever. But uh, under this condition, it's still a special case of KBR. There's also such thing as sub-game perfect equilibrium. Equilibrium, it's also a special case of KBR, and etc. What happens if Nash equilibrium is unique? If, yes. Yes, I'll, I'll answer this, this very good question. I'll answer, then it's KBR. I, I'll give you the answer, but it will follow from a general picture and general theorem. There will be one, uh, uh, so far they're all just more or less, uh, it's fundamental, but more or less uh, just easy observations uh, from the epistemic point of view, but there is one, one, one real theorem later on, which compares Nash with, with KBR and, and uh, uh, after which I, I really dare now to show it to, to the public. So there is one more thing which, is, uh, which should be addressed, one more comparison which should be done in here. It's, called, it's the comparison of KBR with the so-called Oman rationality. Uh, Bob Oman uh, considers, uh, this, uh, Oman's approach considers irrational and knownly dominated strategy. So uh, th this is a very nice criteria of rationality which already takes into account the epistemic state of players. So it says that if players know a strategy which is strictly dominant than the, the one he is playing, his choice is irrational. And rationality means the complement of rationality. So it's easy to see that the, the knowledge base, our KBR approach, also considers such a strategy irrational. And hence, KBR solution is always Oman's rationality, uh, is Oman's rational as well. So it may be, the KBR may be regarded as a definitive version of Oman's rationality, but Oman's rationality is not necessarily gives, uh, 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 in certain, uh, in, in many, in many uh, performation games, it's not, uh, it's not definitive. And in this game in particular, uh, if A is not aware of B's rationality of the same game tree, then uh, both strategies for A, playing down or playing across, may be regarded as rational. They are not irrational because uh, uh, there is no, for playing down, there is, um, yes, well, for playing down, there is a choice, uh, yes, there is a, uh, under different choices of B, different choices of A become superior in terms of payoffs. So none of them strictly dominates the other. And that's exactly the trick. There is a certain uncertainty which Oman's notion of rationality doesn't help to deal with. But uh, again, imagine they're under pressure of making specific decision. We have to make decision. According to the rules, A has to make a decision. It's not, uh, he cannot dodge making decisions. So according to the game, he has to make a decision. And uh, Oman's rationality helps to roll out something, but not all, it, it, it doesn't always, and particularly in this particular case, it doesn't provide a definitive answer whereas KBR does. But again, uh, the KBR is consistent with Oman rationality, but so Oman rationality filters out certain decisions as rational, but it doesn't zoom to one single solution, whereas we zoom it further. And that's the theorem which I promised, that each KBR path is a Nash path. And uh, it was rather surprising that Brand Adam Brandenburger of NYU, uh, uh, a distinguished, uh, he is the chair in economics at NYU, uh, issued a conjecture which was surprising for me in the first place. And I, I thought of a counterexample counter -example and then uh, I figured the solution. So uh, the KBR path is not necessarily a Nash path in the game. Oh, well, so, so KBR profile, sorry to say, is not necessarily a Nash profile. However, if you consider the real path, the scenario which the game is really played, then we can prove a theorem that each KBR path is a Nash path. So when you do the Nash equilibrium, we sort out things. Uh, th there are several Nash profiles. 
And each of them has a path, of course, corresponding to this. And profile is the choice of strategies. And uh, uh, the path which correspond to Nash equilibria, they're all, um, well, they contain KBR path necessarily. The conjecture is that each, oops, the conjecture is that each KBR path is actually a Nash path. So remember the picture, Nash. But he didn't know anything about KBR. That's the point. And the, the, that's why it was surprising. The, the Nash, uh, well, the, the Nash filter doesn't take into account the epistemic states of players. It's a uniform approach. You look at the game tree and you sort out something. And you look kind of, uh, you, you choose kind of a local, op it's na Nash equilibrium, it's like lo local, you're maximizing locally. It's, lo it's maximization on certain axes. And uh, mathematicians know that local maximization is not necessarily give, does not necessarily give you global maximization. And uh, uh, in this particular case, we end up with certain Nash profiles, which are chosen regardless, uh, with, with, without any respect to the epistemic states of players. That's why these paths there, uh, then we, 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 we shrink from, we extract Nash paths from Nash profiles, and there are several of them. And this theorem says that each KBR solution, which is a knowledge-based solution, is one of them. If you change, in particular, if you change the epistemic state of players, you can move from one Nash path to another. And this, this game gives us an example. But you're always within the Nash path. So the Nash test for the rational behavior was totally correct for perfect information games. It was not definitive, though. You can end up with the different choices because necessarily so, because uh, re the real path really depends on epistemic states of players. But in any case, the Nash, uh, the Nash field test, you end up with a cover of all possible KBR solutions for all epistemic states of error. And uh, this is a nice picture which may help us to, to understand what's going on here. So this is called iterated and dominant, uh, and dominance path. So the ones, uh, the, the, these are the paths which survive such a classical uh, strategy of uh, decision strategy as eliminating strictly dominant strategies. Uh, it's well known fact that national uh, Nash equilibrium paths are inside IU, so it's it's a stricter filter. Uh, and our theorem says that KBR solution is always for any epistemic state of players. It's always inside Nash equilibrium, and so in this respect, it's a, it's a definitive version of both Omen rationality and the national Nash equilibrium Nash rationality Nash equilibrium rationality, and the the, the backward induction solution and pure maximum solution, there. Uh, extreme cases of KBR, then the maximum solution, pure maximum solution, corresponds to the situation when players are completely unaware of other rationality. They have no idea. So they consider all the, all the moves possible. That's why they play worst case scenario all the time. And the, the backward induction solution, according to the Omens theorem of rationality, corresponds to the solution when everybody knows about every other's rationality. They can figure exactly which each, each, each uh, other people's move while making decisions, so there's always one solution for everyone. And the KBR is in, is in between, so it covers both cases for different epistemic conditions and is always, uh, and always works for any epistemic state of players. Well, if you have time, I'm not sure we can, we can play with some more examples, but that's basically the picture. We do? Good. Yep. Uh, well, maybe uh, you have full knowledge. Yeah, well, let me back to this example. It's a manipulation example. When you have it, uh, so the, our notion of rationality is is rather rigid, but uh, it's justified, uh, epistemically justified, and maybe justified and game theoretically. So let's assume that. And uh, um, there are there are very interesting possibilities uh, to to study rational decisions and manipul in particular manipulation uh, uh, the base of within this particular KBR model. 
so let's consider the game where there are three players, A, B, and C, A, play, each makes move in, each, in, in, in the corresponding node. So the, the payoffs in the terminal nodes are, uh, let's pay off for A, B, and C, uh, the coordinates 1, 2, and 3. So if B is a rational player, then uh, B plays the, uh, left or right, and the B's payoff is right in the middle. So B's choice, it's two here and one here. So B's rational choice would be left. Uh, the same for C, but C's coordinate is number three. So th C's payoffs are three and one accordingly. So C also plays left. And if A knows that B and C are rational, then A figures then B plays left. And so A follows, uh, figures that B's payoff, A's payoff is better playing left, so E plays left. But uh, in another case, let's, let's assume that A knows nothing about B and C rationality. Then what happens? Mm, A plays, uh, calculates his best known payoff. And A knows, A knows that he, if he plays right, then uh, he, the best payoff he can secure is one. He cannot secure three because there's no way he does. He, there's no, he knows that he doesn't know whether C plays left or right. And the same here, uh, the, the worst payoff for, uh, well, the best, the highest known payoff for A, uh, I stress known here, is uh, two. So A plays, chooses left, and unexpectedly B, as a, as a, as a, as a just a strike of, like, of luck, uh, B plays left and delivers the real payoff 4. So the best known payoff for A is 2, but the real payoff will be 4. So because A got lucky down there. Now, but B may reasons have, has reasons uh, to be unhappy because B's payoff is just 2, whereas B might believe that he could do better. And uh, what B can do, B can lick the information, the truthful information to A that C is rational. It changes the game for A. Then if A knows that C is going to play left, then C knows that his best known payoff for after playing right is becomes three. So A chooses, uh, goes to, chooses right, then C chooses left, and that's, that's, that's a terminal note when everything ends up. So A gets three, is exactly what he expected, according to his knowledge. B gets four, C gets three. Interestingly enough, C doesn't have an incentive to disclose that B is rational to A. Because if, if C discloses this and A plays left, then B plays left and C ends up with payoff 2, whereas C is now payoff 3. So this is the kind of analysis which becomes, uh, which becomes uh, available and uh, makes sense within this particular theory. And uh, so B wins without any making a move. It's a nice example which you can generalize even, even further, but it shows that partial information, even truthful information, can be used as a manipulation device. So the full knowledge is power of model predictions. Every game has rational, with rational players has a solution. The rational players know which moves to make at each node. Those who know the game in full know the solution, knows every, everybody's move. More knowledge yields a high known payoff. So if you know more about the game, you know uh, your, expect, your highest payoff, highest known payoff goes up, but not necessarily highs, higher actual payoff. And this example shows that uh, nothing but the truth can be misleading. So knowing the whole truth, however, yields a higher actual payoff. You can show this. And uh, there are certain situations we look in the model where knowledge doesn't really matter. For example, in strictly competitive, in particular zero-sum games, when the best strategy for one is the worst strategy for the other, uh, of two players, uh, epistemic states lead to the same maximum solution. Maybe this is why military actions, typical zero-sum games, uh, do not require any sophisticated reason about other players. Just do it normally suffices. So the big class of game, games where this thing doesn't really matter. So conclusions. That's the one I promised. That's the last slide. Do we really recommend playing perfect formation games using KBR strategy? And this, this is engineering discussion. Of course not, if you can responsibly assign probabilities to your opponent's responses. But if you cannot, 
just do the best to your knowledge, to the best of your knowledge, rule out all impossible strategies of the game. And you end up with a certain core uncertainty which you, at the best of your knowledge, you cannot handle, uh, you cannot rule out, and you know that you can rule them out. And this knowledge that you cannot rule them out uh, provides you uh, with knowledge that you cannot have a better strategy than the maximum strategy after you rule out all impossible ones on the basis of the best of your knowledge. And deal with this uncertainty using KBR, the, this is the only rational method of playing performation games. Uh, for example, yes. Mm, let's back to this game. Yeah. If a if he doesn't know that b uh, rational is not aware of rationality b and c, that a considers both moves possible here and both moves possible here. If a knows that c is rational, then this is ruled out. The uh, the, the c strategy. Is, is ruled out, so A knows that C is playing here, so it's not no longer a possibility. So now the picture of the game for A is A to C, C to this terminal node, and there's still two choices. And if A knows, in addition, A knows that B is rational, that this thing also ruled out. And then the, 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 the universe of the game for A is left here, left here, so it's the Omens rationality theorem solution. It means that it's it's actually, equivalent to the common knowledge of rationality thing. So uh, A knows exactly what moves our other players are making, so it's an easy choice for generic game to pick the one which yields the highest payoff. But if not, if you're down to the, uh, to the core, as, as with this example, which you cannot rule out any other thing, you use KBR. But only after you filter out, you, to the best of your knowledge, all other things. Otherwise, a pure maximum and pure maximum is way, way too restrictive. Thank you.